Good morning. <clears throat> Happy hump day. Wednesday morning. It's a brisk 37 degrees out today. Uh, hope everybody's having a good week so far. Uh, I'm excited. We have another basketball game. My son's team still has a little gas left in the tank. York Suburban has one basketball team or one basketball game left for now. Um, if they win tomorrow night, uh, they continue to play through districts. Um, I think if they win three district games, they qualify for states. So some pretty exciting basketball left for my son and his teammate, York Suburban. <clears throat> It's probably been quite some time. Rob Kraut, good morning. Baker, what's up? Um, it's probably been a while since York Suburban's made it to a state tournament. And uh, it would be a huge accomplishment for uh, this team and obviously my son to be able to, to make it to the state basketball tournament. So they play tomorrow. And if they win, they continue their, their quest to make it to a state playoff basketball game, which would be pretty awesome. So anyway... I wanted to talk about a philosophy and a policy that I've read about that is super intriguing to me. And I've talked about this in our company and in our leadership meetings. And go Trojans. That's right, Rob. Uh, go YS, baby. But um, uh, for those of you who don't know, I graduated from York Suburban. Rob Kraut also graduated from York Suburban. We both played on the basketball team. Um, so we have a bit of a soft spot for York Suburban basketball, but <coughs> like I put in the caption, <coughs> my goodness, I've read about companies that have implemented a no fire policy and, uh, really what it is, it's a, it's a way to hold management and leadership accountable for two really critical things. One is training two is expectations and then even the third there'd be three would be doing your proper due diligence during the hiring process and taking careful care to hire not only a, a good person but a person that's the right fit for the position that you're hiring I've talked before on different videos and I've been through pretty extensive training about uh disc profiles, behavior profiles. We use something called a predictive index as well as, I'm sorry, I got to put sunglasses on. Um, I hate wearing sunglasses in videos, but this route, when I come up Tri-Hill Road and go the back way uh, to my office, the sun is like blinding. But so here's how it would work. You implement a no fire policy at your company. Instantly, here's the changes <clears throat> that you start to see. And the no fire policy is this. No one can be terminated or let go for performance issues. They can only be terminated if they violate the company's uh, values or core values. So obviously if someone steals, they lie, uh, they're disrespectful to, to, to uh, other coworkers, um, you know, uh, they lack integrity where, you know, they've, they've been misleading, um, either with customers or, or whatever. Right. So if they, if they do something that is in direct violation with your company's core values, then they can be terminated, but they cannot be terminated for performance issues. So here's what happens. One of the biggest, um, issues inside of most workplaces is people become, um, disengaged. And the reason they become disengaged is because they don't get feedback. They're concerned about whether or not, um, they know the direction of the company, how they fit and they check out. They, 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 they start to worry about their performance and then that directly impacts their performance and whether it was good or bad or great, their performance gets worse. So when you have a no fire policy, now again, this isn't one thing that you can do inside of a company and have it fix everything. But for us at our stage in our company in Pennsylvania, um, I think we're ready for a no fire policy. The, so here's what happens. Um, when managers hire for a position, 
How well do you think they're going to screen that particular person, knowing that if they don't perform, they will be the person that that is that is ultimately responsible for that performance. So if they hire someone and they don't perform, you can't simply fire somebody, cross your fingers, hope for the best, hire someone else and hope that they're going to do better. The chances of that are slim to none. Most people don't perform less than less than 20% of performance issues have to do with the actual person. 80% of performance issues are either from lack of training or a lack of of understanding of expectations. So what does that mean? The person hasn't been trained how to do the job to the standards or they don't know what the standards are. It's not clear to them to what the expectations are. Um, There's not constant feedback from leadership. They don't have scoreboards so that uh, team members can track their progress and understand how their commitments, their progress and their contributions contribute to the bottom line of the company. So that's all, you know, part of of running a successful company with good communication and a great culture. But this particular thing that I'm talking about, to me, puts a tremendous amount of focus on people and the training of people and the 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 the, the feedback that you give to your people and setting pro, you know real expectations and holding people accountable. <clears throat> so when you have a no fire policy, if you have someone that's not performing the option of firing is off the table. What are you left with? The manager has to train them. They have to train, 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 train. And then as you're training someone, particularly if they're relatively new or the gap between their current performance and the expectations is large, you have to constantly give feedback and hold those people accountable. So a no fire policy will force your managers to train their people, which statistically it's it's known that a lack of training is one of the biggest, if not the biggest contributor to lack of production. So then you know how, how it, it, it empowers um, or encourages or holds your, your managers accountable to train, right? Because they're not able to fire them. Now think about what it would do for your company and their ability to be able to recruit people. If you had a no fire policy, how many people would want to come work at your company? Knowing that at certain times, at certain places, or at certain jobs, either either the, the person themselves or someone that they know was was let go um, from a position for lack of production, and the lack of production was directly correlated to the fact that they didn't get trained, or they didn't know the expectations. The communication at leadership at a company was poor, and it led to someone losing their job. So now you're going to start to uh, attract Um, a higher level of talent because what a lot of people want, what most people want is security at their, their job, right? And no matter how hard they try or how good of a job they do sometimes, without proper feedback, people don't always know that they're doing a good job or know that they could be doing better. So when you have a no fire policy, it, it definitely will increase communication because if someone's not producing and a manager knows that they're not able to, to terminate that person for lack of production, they have to communicate with them, they have to train them, they have to set clear expectations, and they have to hold them accountable. Or the manager is ultimately the person that's held responsible for the lack of production. And if the manager doesn't train, if the manager doesn't hold them accountable, if the manager doesn't set clear expectations, now, technically, the manager has a core value issue. They're not, they're not operating with a level of integrity. They're being disrespectful to that person. So inside of our company, respect and integrity are two of our major core values. So as a manager, if you're not training your people, you're not holding them accountable, and you're not showing them the respect to help them learn their job, you would be in a position to where you could be terminated. So it creates this value system that's much different than just holding people accountable for production. And the biggest, listen, we all need to produce, like you gotta produce results in any company, whether you're in the the grocery store business, whether you're in retail, whether you're in real estate, results is what puts food on our table. But, But it's not the focus on those results that produces the results, it's the focus on the behavior, the behaviors that lead to the results, right? So if you're in real estate, it's prospecting, it's networking, it's um, communicating with clients, it's follow-up, it's, it's, you know, 
um, showing houses. So if you focus on those three or four behaviors and how to train people on those behaviors, they will sell homes, they'll produce results, and they will contribute and, and add value to the team. And as you train people and you give them feedback and you hold accountable, they feel appreciated. They feel like they mean something. That's how you create a culture inside of a company. But one cool part of that is I'm considering how we could implement a no fire policy. And it puts a tremendous amount of responsibility on the leaders inside of the company. But ultimately, that pressure is already there. We just often sometimes are let off the hook as managers and leaders because we're in an at-will state, which means we can lay off people or terminate positions for the simple fact that they're not producing or we're eliminating the position or we're downsizing. But what we don't realize is that we affect people's lives. Like us as managers and leaders <clears throat> go back to business as usual. We either hire someone for that position um, or we cross train someone else in the company to do it. Um, and we go back to business as usual. Is it disruptive a little bit? Sure. Does it take us time to, to get caught up on tasks that used to be done by this person? Sure. But it changes this person's life. life. They no longer have a job. And they were working at a job that in some capacity, they thought they had a future. So when you, when you think about a no fire policy, and listen, it's not really about, you know, if you decide to, to it's, this is a bold move and it's not necessarily about doing this, it's about the impact it would have. So if you can create that mindset, if you can create that culture um, without physically having a no fire policy, um, then, then congratulations to you, kudos to you. <clears throat> but my point is, is that if you think about the impact that a no fire policy would have, um, then it's easy to see how important those things are, right? So as we talk through how a no fire policy would work, it makes it clear that training is, is of you know, top importance. And uh, we should have already known this, but hey, this makes it more clear. It actually makes it mandatory, and a no fire policy atmosphere, right? Because you don't have the ability to terminate that person. Your only option is to train them. And then once you train them, you need to check back in with them on a regular basis. That's called accountability and feedback. You need to set clear expectations. Like the person should know what's expected of them. What is a good job? What is a great job? What is a bad job? Right? So think about what a no fire policy would mean. Uh, your hiring would, would become much slower. <clears throat> your firing would become <coughs> much slower um, because you would train people. And if you think about it, if you're hiring the right person up front, why are they not working out three months from now, four months from now? I think a lot of times companies say that, oh, they interviewed well or we missed something in the interview. <sighs> Or, you know, the person just isn't who they said they were. But a lot of times I think it means the company's not who they said they were. When you interview, a lot of companies talk about training and support and culture and, and, and commitment and, and teamwork. And then you see these people show up and they struggle with a job and they're, 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 they're by themselves. The managers turn their back on them. Um, they get frustrated and they're, they're busy with doing their, the hundred other things that they do. And they forget about this person that they hired, that they committed to and talked about their team culture. And now they're struggling and they won't make the commitment to train them. A no fire policy forces leadership to train your people and train again and train again. You're not going to be able to just train someone or most people the first 90 days they're at a job and expect them to remember or do the best job that they can forever. So <clears throat> just something to think about. I thought it was super cool. I read about it in a book or listened to it in, in a book. I don't read. I listen to books. And uh, it wasn't so much the idea of the no fire policy. It was the, res you know, the residual effect that had on people and management that made it clear to me how important training, communication, and accountability is. And uh, it also puts you know, into perspective um, how important it is to your team members and employees um, and how they feel and how, uh, how their feelings impact their production. If they feel secure, if they feel safe, um, they're going to do a better job. So as leaders and managers, it's our job to make people feel safe. If we have a no fire policy, people should feel safe unless they're stealing or lying. Then they won't feel safe. 
Um, but it's just something to think about. It's something we're going to work on here um, from a leadership perspective in our company. Um, I think it's phenomenal, the commitment that it makes to your people. And uh, it's something I'd love to be able to do for the people that work for, for CR Property Group, Clear to Close, Integrity First Home Buyers, and the Liz Hamburger team. So anyway, I hope everybody has a great day and uh, I'll see you around later.